For our first story, I kept it close to home because you don't need to travel too far to find passionate people. Nestled in the back streets of Surrey Hills, New South Wales, Firedoor is a one-of-a-kind type of restaurant. Hi Lennox, how are you? Good afternoon, very well, thank you. That's good, thank you so much for having me. Such a pleasure. What are you going to be making for me today? Uh, we've got a variety. We've basically decided to stick with two predominantly all Australian ingredients. So we have some live marin, some live hippies, wow. uh, and some of our dry aged beef. This is uh, this is the workhorse. This is this is our, our our grill, our restaurant. So as you can see, this is all fire powered, all wood powered by wood, so not charcoal. Mm -hmm. And we burn a variety of different woods on any given day right. in accordance with the ingredients. So same again, everything's done to order. Um, the items are gently placed on the grill and then subjected to fire. And we try to entertain the woods in relation to the ingredients themselves. The, the wood burns in this oven. Can I have a peek? You can have a peek. Ooh, ooh. It's about to get a bit hotter. Hot. Ooh, that's so, nice. So this oven is literally like, the, the start of the day is the lighting of the fire. Every chef that works here has to light a fire. Um, you burn off all the volatile compounds and what you're left with are these beautiful fruit embers. Wow, that's so, so pretty. You go, from, you go from raw wood to ember. So it's all, and, that, and that's the first stage in, in, in our cooking. Essentially, the first stage is the cooking of the wood mm -hmm. because the wood itself is the ingredient in the senses. That glow is so pretty. It just so happens that my favorite color is orange. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only restaurant in Sydney to have everything cooked with uh, fire, is that uh, correct? The only one in Australia. In Australia. Australia, wow. <laughs> That's even more impressive. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a tarred um, line to follow because it is extremely labour intensive. Literally here it's a gradual process throughout the day, but it's then harnessing that, that power and, and understanding the ingredient more. And that's, that's why I do it. It's certainly not a convenient method of cooking, <laughs> uh, but it is perhaps the most rewarding. Wow. And that's that challenge that drives me on a daily basis, that interaction with an ingredient, because essentially you're relying on your, all your senses are awakened. Mm. You're relying on your touch, your smell. You can even hear it sometimes the way the fire burns differently with the, the, the flow of air, how an ingredient reacts on the coals. Mm. It's like a completely different way of cooking. And the wonderful thing about cooking with fire is it's an expression of the human heart. And wow. this is my expression. And for me, it's something very delicate that respects the ingredient in its entirety. That's so romantic. Wow, he really surprised me with that. And so literally, you, know, you, see a, you see something that's been killed, grilled, and then served. And the proof is in eating, so would you like to try? Absolutely. Will you join me? <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Lennox showed me that by putting a little bit of everything on my fork, got the maximum flavour intended. Here we go. That's nice. Wow. Pretty special. Then we put some pippies on the fire. And so when you cook them, they start to open up. Exactly. Yeah. So they tell you when they're ready. Oh, OK. So that's the best bit of an easy one to cook. So they open up their door and go, come, come eat me. Exactly. And actually, I love cooking these, you know, even so many things like ingredients I love cooking in the restaurant. But these especially just because they're so fun, you know? And, and I love the sound as well. It's yes. such a beautiful the clink. The in the bowl. Oh, clink, clink, clink. Oh, this ain't your first lemon zest, is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. I've zested my fingertips a few times. <laughs> no fingertips, please. <sighs> so good. I don't know what everybody else is having for dinner, but <laughs> I'm sorted. Wow. That's it, huh? Lovely. That looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to eat this. <laughs> wow. So you just put the whole thing in your mouth. Okay. Mm. Oh my gosh. The smell. Wow. I wish there was wow. smell of vision. Wow. Okay. And this was a beautiful example of things to come. Mm -hmm. Now I'm out of meat, the juice, this is lark. So good. 
I had to sneak another bite of the pippies before we started on the steak. You know, we're a grill restaurant, we're not a steakhouse. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I, if I was going to have one steak, it had to be a good one. Lennox gets his beef from Vic's Quality Meats. It's aged between 140 and 180 days and can be a Wagyu rating of five. This meat is so finely marbled that it bastes itself, so no oil required. He blows on the coals to ensure the perfect temperature and control of fire. Uh, we serve it actually just by itself with a simple salad. Literally just some, some garden, some like, really good lettuce, uh, a couple of pickled onions, that's it. Like there's so much going on and people always go, oh, you know, so many different places might serve it with, you know, they go, where's the horseradish, where's the mustard, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, I, say, I always say to them, wait and taste it because there's so much going on in that piece of meat in terms of complexity level. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, it's almost, it's like, it just needs salt and that's it. You need to sort of have it by, by itself to appreciate the fact Please. that it's aged for yeah, so long. Completely. And you'll find, something else you'll find, you'll find there's a, a different flavour profile from one side to the other and one, one edge to the other. And then we'll see the closer you get to the bone, the sweeter the meat. Yes. It's been a big year so far. We've done quite a few events. We are involved uh, this year in the World's 50 Best. Uh, down in Melbourne, which is fantastic because nice. we got to represent um, Australia um, on, a, on a world scale. Um, and the great thing about that is then essentially then inviting the world to come and dine, not just at your restaurant, at Vidal, which is obviously always a great honor, but just to come to Australia and to see what amazing things are happening. Um, because it's a long way from anywhere else, but we're very much saying to them it's, it's well worth the trip. And um, I finished writing my first book. Really? What's it's it called? Fantastic. Finding Fire. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. So that took uh, 18 months and we did, uh, did, did all the writing, the recipes and the shooting. So and that comes out this year. It's incredible. Yeah, it's just the, the fat that runs through it just wow. melts. Right, it's just incredible. And it looks so it's juicy it's, and yeah, moist. It's... Oh, how juicy and delectable does this look? Now, I do have a steak knife and I do have a fork, but you are more than welcome to use your fingers. I think fingers, I, I, yeah. This deserves my fingers. I'm never leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> they say that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Uh -huh. I think it holds true the other way around, too. Very quite true. Well done, Lennox.